um, as part of our work. And I hope I can, well, not answer the question, but show some examples of where it's useful. So it's kind of a good segue. Um, in the educational space, we tend to um, sort of take for granted the value of linked data in a lot of contexts because there are um, ontologies to describe uh, accomplishment and achievement frameworks. Um, but so we'll get there and actually, um, I'm going to share my screen. I cannot go deep on any one thing. So it's just going to be, I, I put the link into chat. Let me share my screen now. Um, oh, sorry. I might have to stop sharing first. Oh, no, I. I OK, yeah. cool. <laughs> Okay, um, so yeah, we're going to cover um, uh, sort of three areas. One is what we're doing in the Verifiable Credentials for Education Task Force, um, the Digital Credentials Consortium, uh, which is a consortium of universities. MIT is one where I work, and then um, you know Harvard, and then some international institutions. We're we're using um, you know a lot of the sort of tools and, and standards mentioned here. Um, I'm going to talk quickly to other DCC design choices. Um, and then also just keep in mind that we're, we're um, so I'm presenting this because one, like we've been in um, sort of mad flurry of work and, um, you know, not necessarily able to communicate it to a broad audience. So I'm curious to just get it out there, get feedback, but then also we're looking for contributions, participation in, in all of these groups. And if there's anything that looks useful in terms of like tools or whatever, um, we're open to relocation. Um, the first one I want to call out is the Verifiable Credentials for Education Task Force. So what we're working on there is, um, I am not sure, can you still see my screen? This, uh, Okay. So, um, you know, and we're a task force within the CCG focusing on educational credentials. Um, so the, the cool thing about verifiable credentials is they can be used to represent anything, but how do you do it? So um, I was hoping someone else would solve that problem for us, but uh, so we had to do it. And so a lot of uh, what we're talking about here is actually modeling educational verifiable credentials. Um, we started with surveys of, of different related efforts in the educational space, which you may want to look through some of our past work, but now we're focusing pretty heavily on our, uh, a, a couple of work items. So one is, is this one, um, modeling educational verifiable credentials. Um, so it's really kind of use case driven where the goal of this document and draft specification is just to say like, you know, if you want to use a verifiable credential to express something like a diploma, something like a course or program certificate, um, here are, here's our guidance on a good way to get started. So um, CCG, of course, isn't an SDO, um, but what's been nice with the educational task force is we've been able to get participants from um, educational SDOs like um, uh, PESC, um, IMS Global, and, um, you know, international participation too. So we have the, the hard workers at those places who can sort of help unblock pilots, get, get, make the farthest progress that we can. And then we can turn these over as recommendations for further incubation, but really this is to sort of help inform, uh, unblock our pilots for uh, where we wanted to use verifiable credentials. And we wanted to, to do the best we can with regard to um, in, interacting or using these uh, rich uh, educational competency frameworks already used. So um, I want to call out quickly that, um, you know, so yes, we, we were talking about how to use VCs with educational standards. Linked data is already commonly used in the education space. Um, credential engine registry slash credential finder, which is the browser into um, credentials, does have um, you know, a, a good starting set of, of linked data. So I, I pulled up one and uh, you'll notice down here, you can access this, uh, um, when they use the term credential, 
um, it's it's actually not our same term. So these are more like um, static definitions of awards accomplishments, not specific to a subject. So these are just sort of flat definitions. Well, not flat, but um, you know, sort of definitions of an accomplishment that can be assigned to a person. Um, so those are all accessible here. Um, let's see. Okay, what else? So, um, so yeah, for ex so one of one of our big focuses is uh, you know things like how do you make a verifiable credential that uses something that's in Credential Finder. So just connecting the dots. Um, other efforts in our task force are, you know, we have participation from people working on European data standards like the EDCI um, and ESSIF efforts. And um, you know legal signature requirements that come in that do have influence on um, the VC data model, and um, so we're working through some issues like that. There, there may be need to there. There is need to um, do some XML support with verifiable credentials, and then there's a lot of interest in. Um, verifiable credentials and PDFs, which that's kind of an ongoing, there's a lot of different approaches to it. A lot of people are interested in it. Um, so that that is going along. Let me go on to the next slide. Okay, so um, the next thing I wanted to point out is um, Digital Credentials Consortium, which is where I work. Uh, Ori, this may look familiar. We, we like to use Ori's code. He writes a lot of good reusable components. And so these um, views right here are from the material uh, uh, did React framework that he developed. So this is just a dev playground. So for example, the the educational credential examples that are mentioned in that spec I just referred to, um, you know, if you want to play around and start using them, this is just a, a good way for us to sort of test out things. Um, and let's see. So, so yeah, we also do, oops, typo plan to incorporate um, some of the tools that have been discussed about linked data checking. I think they've been discussed here that Transmute and Matter have worked on. Um, tying into this is this uh, sign and verify tool that we built, which is for our, our pilots. It basically implements, if you're familiar with the VC HTTP API, which is the API um, that, that the DHS SVIP, sorry, so many acronyms, people developed for um, testing interoperability for VC and did implementation. So um, we implement that. And then also um, one of the things we're trying to do with this is layout is not great, but um, is demonstrate to people how the components are used. So again, people in this sense kind of means a very technical dev audience, but for example, you can, um, my Heroku service may not uh, respond to me, but uh, so you can demonstrate signing a credential. Uh, these are just, these are not for production use. Verification, and then um, this one is it's not really, but this is just something to issue a, a dummy credential, but um, that's needs work. Um, the one that would be cool if we could get broader participation on is this uh, command line tool, CredGen. Uh, we needed it for our own pilots because, um, you know, we have all these different universities and, and entities within universities with different issuer profiles, dis issuing different kinds of um, credentials with uh, different accomplishments. And so it's basically something that lets you set up these sort of profiles of different accomplishments, issuers and everything. And we rely heavily on, I meant to check, I think I went in the end with mustache versus handlebar, but um, because I can't remember, obviously I didn't, it wasn't a huge deal breaker either way, but these templates can be, um, you know, for example, partially filled and used directly in issuing systems. So I, I include an example here, which is like, you know, I can, I can define my achievements, which is like, um, well, this is just a, a total demo one, but then I can leave templatized things like the, the recipient uh, did name, 
um, issuance date. And then that way, this template that I've developed, I can just plug directly into my issuance system. And you don't have to use it command line. It's usable as a library as well. I just want to highlight um, closing out a few other implementation choices and sort of pointing to efforts in the community we're really eager about and how we plan to remain involved. Um, so we, we are participating in the Universal Wallet Interop spec. We're very excited about that. We recently got a DOE, a Department of Education meaning, um, award to help push that along in, um, in the context of learner wallets. Initial implementation choices for pilots, we use did web for issuers. It works just fine. Our issuers are going to be around for a while. And so it was a really practical, useful way to go. We're using um, another transmute contribution LDS JWS 2020 signature suite. Uh, we do have a lightweight credential request scheme uh, using uh, some aspects of did auth. In general, um, we partially from, um, you know, looking at the other efforts underway and, you know, sort of like the benefits that we were able to use so many of the like transmutes components. Um, we, we really like using React, React Native and NPM packages, although um, we've not published a lot yet because the code base is sort of um, converging. So, you know, certainly if, if there's interest that would accelerate our are those efforts. So we're kind of waiting for things to converge before really like pushing uh, stablish version versions. We use TypeScript. Um, we're also very interested in the BBS plus signature suite and um, a lot of other research efforts underway related to, um, you know, the, the universities involved. For example, we have um, through MIT, there's the digital currency initiative. I forget now what it's called, so many acronyms, digital currency initiative, things like that. So we, we're sort of split between like deeper research efforts around this space to sort of support the longer term questions underway, not just technical, but things like what's necessary for GDPR compliance. Um, but then meanwhile, we have pilots underway where we're making choices now. And so we're trying to keep that documented and hope hopefully help the community there. And that is all. How did I do on time? Oh, 10 minutes, okay. Uh, 10 minutes for Q&A, if that was too fast for anyone. I was struggling to keep notes. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> other people missed, missed details and want you to rewind a few slides. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pulling up. Let's see. I saw some Q oh Q separations of concern. Separation of concerns. Oh, Adrian, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, but I don't want to monopolize the agenda. I, I know I ask a million questions and uh, I if if nobody else has questions, then sure I'll ask my question. If anyone wants to go back to look at anything, I know I blazed through it. So I'm just wanting to get the the bits out there. And so um, we can look more deeply at anything, but otherwise, um, you know, we can. Yeah, I, I, I had a quick question, Kim. Uh, you know, we're, we're, do, we're doing one of the LER pilots and actually I was surveying, I think all of the listed LER pilots on the T3 website the other night. Are any of the other pilots using the LER wrapper to your knowledge? I haven't found anyone like I think that the LER and ILR terms are so um, uh, they've been uh, watered down. So uh, one thing I didn't mention that we're eager to to promote is the effort, the interop test suites that are underway that have been originally uh, pushed through the SVIP uh, interop cohort. But so we want to um, add some more participation in that too. I think that's really critical to the LER pilots for, um, you know, I know that they're having a lot of conversations about what constitutes an LER pilot and it's pretty much just people trying to convince each other at this point. I think it'll be very interesting for us to start introducing some, you know, conformance test suites, things like that. So um, if you're interested in that, um, reach out to me. I'd be interested to talk about that. Great, thank you. 
Uh, Pam. Pam? You're muted, Pam. Or you're not whole, muted, but you are whole, silent. <laughs> my whole, yeah, <laughs> I'm really <laughs> silent, <laughs> as you all know. Um, so my question for you is, is, you know, if you could, you know, magically snap your fingers and command this interrupt effort to do one thing, what, what would you have us do first? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, so, okay, just quick note. I've been really eager to get involved in the interrupt effort. I thought it was at 6 a.m. my time. I guess every, every, do you do this one regularly? Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. So I can start. To, <laughs> I think See you in two I, weeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, that's cool. Um, I think that I was not familiar with like what we could talk about. Certainly with the, there's, um, uh, I think his name was uh, Keith. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of momentum starting in the education space where we'll be talking about like exactly the point that he just brought up. Uh, wallet, there's a lot of interest in, in the wallet. And then also, um, you know, there's just a few efforts, like there's this ACE blockchain challenge, um, which is from the Department of Education money, basically. So there's a few efforts that are getting a lot of excitement. And um, I think that DIFF would probably be a pretty good location to have a lot of the um, sort of practical ongoing type discussions, you know, like, um, um, you know, through the Slack channel and everything. So um, I'm glad to know that we can join, start joining at a more convenient time. And, you know, uh, other of our participants may be able to join at the earlier times. I think it would be nice to start doing some work here. And it really kind of informs the pilots. Like I think, um, you know, now that we're starting to focus more on wallets and in, in earnest, um, you know, there will probably be a lot of discussion there. I think um, there's no one thing I would snap my fingers. It's just that I would like to be having these conversations um, in, a, in a sort of more continuous way than, you know, like in the VCEDU task force that sort of confined the calls and all of that. Yeah. Well, uh uh, Pam, did you have another comment? Is your hand, or is your hand just still up? And sorry. Oh, <laughs> well, I was I was just going to say that in terms of our uh, short-term goals, what what we've been doing here is just trying to get some generate a bunch of materials that could be consumed in a choose your own adventure way to get people up to speed if they're coming only from Aries, only from Jots, only from LD. Um, and sort of do some level setting background work, which which uh, Adrian might might be a partial answer to the question of uh, why Ori was uh, explaining in such detail the necessity of document loaders, or or sort of a it's it's sort of a circular logic, right? Like like understanding what a document loader is is an explanation of why you need one if you're coming from the non LD space and you've had the, the, some of those logistics abstracted away. Like a lot of people coming from um, the Aries world have built really complicated, innovative, complex stuff at one level and have just used the libraries for everything at other levels. So they're, they're like, haven't gone into this like dereferencing theoretical stuff. Um, so we're, we're just trying to gather together all of this stuff and get some uh, materials together for people. Uh, so if that is any explanation, Kim, of how, how we're hoping to be useful, <laughs> uh, first steps towards being useful. And in terms of the uh, test suites that are being housed at CCG, that are being iterated in SVIP, um, I, I want very much this group to be complementary to that. Like there's, there's no use in redoing any of that work or I don't know, hosting anything that detracts from that work. We, we only want to generate materials that are in some way complementary or provide on ramps to that. Um, I don't know, yeah, sorry. I'm... I think that's really necessary. Like the only way that 
I figure out practically how anything is happening is reading a lot of Ori's code. And, um, <laughs> and I think that, you know, there, there are a few people in the community that kind of like know a lot and I know it's like a lot of pressure on them. And so I think, you know, having more of those onboarding discussions in this community would be um, very useful and hopefully we can um, spread some of the burden that that Ori experiences as well. <laughs> Our plan is just to film him. We're just gonna make a dedicated YouTube channel of Ori explaining things. Um, <laughs> and, and you explaining things, Kim. Um, I just use his code, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I think that, yeah, I, I, this whole sandbox uh, e, a VC EDU community is, is another way that you've been building on ramps here. So I just want that to be, I don't know, disseminated. I want people who are working on totally unrelated use cases to realize that would be a good place to learn as well. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. And thank you for inviting me to this. It's, just, it's great to know also that I can attend regularly. <laughs> and, and there's recordings and notes for the 6 a.m.